Welcome to the Becoming Aware podcast, where I, Genevieve Faulkner, share what I'm becoming aware of. Hello and welcome to Becoming Aware. My name is Genevieve Faulkner, your host. And today I wanted to talk about theta healing, the gift that it can be, um, the gift that it's been for me, and um, just kind of like share a little bit about that journey. I've spent like the last four days training in a couple of classes of theta healing that I haven't, um, that I hadn't done before. And I've done that partially because I've wanted to kind of like um, just become greater as a facilitator, but also uh, I've, I've wanted to, um, you know, like the programs that I create can assist people to step into their power. But at the same time, I think it's important to be able to like empower people to be able to do things for themselves. And so this, I have been kind of like looking at um, retraining as an instructor of theta healing, which is what I did um, many years ago before I got kind of involved in the world of access consciousness. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to do it for that, that reason. Um, when I left access, um, with everything that happened, I had a lot of resistance to kind of being part of any other modality because, um, you know, I, I'd spent so long, I'd spent so many years training in that I'd spent, um, you know, made like the commitment to be the facilitator. I would like get to the classes every year to recertify. And when that wasn't really respected, um, it really showed me kind of like firstly the importance of not putting all your eggs in one basket um but also the importance of having integrity in a system when you've got lots of people training to be facilitators in that system like there has to be an honoring of that and you can't just kind of like choose on a whim to to take someone's license away. So I was very much kind of like, I don't know if I want to retrain in theta healing because what if the same thing happens again, you know? And all of my education just gets taken off me. Um, all my certifications get taken off me. Um, and yet I'm aware that Viana, the way that she set it up is very different. And I'm aware that she truly desires to empower people to, to, to function from their own knowing and have their own connection to source energy or the energy of like everything that is around us. And I think that like the programs that I create are very much to empower people out of the algorithms or the belief systems um, that they've bought in childhood or that they've bought in other lifetimes so that they can access more of that energy and be connected with all of that but I do think at the same time, it's important to um, know how to kind of uh, be able to change things for yourself and not rely on another. And so that is why I've been looking at um, retraining in September to be an instructor so I can teach the basic and advanced class. So I want to go back to the be to the beginning of my Theta Healing journey. I discovered Theta Healing um, back in in 2011, so I took this leap of faith of leaving my flight, flight attendant job, um, not knowing what the hell I was going to do next, but trusting, I had this real trust. I'd been doing like Reiki for years. Um, I, I'd been doing like psychic work. I, I was, I've, I've always been like an adventurous kind of spirit that kind of like, you know, has that faith in the universe. And so I kind of knew that if I ended my job, the universe would show me what was next. And so I booked this, um, retreat in Southeast Asia, I decided to go um, spend some time backpacking by myself in Southeast Asia. I booked this 10 day detox um, fasting at this center in Thailand. And that's where I discovered Theta Healing. And I had three sessions. Um, at the time, I was I had so much resentment and anger that I was carrying towards men in the way that I'd been treated in the past. And I wasn't also aware of how much emotional energy I was carrying that was actually my family's. Um, and I just thought that was a part of me. So there was kind of like this density and, you know, I'd suffered depression in my teens. Like I was suicidal. There was all of all, there was, there was a lot going on there. And so I had like these three sessions that were around like men and how I'd been treated. And 
there was this change in me. It was like those three sessions were able to lift or allowed me to let go of the rage, the suppressed rage that I had towards men that I didn't even realize I was carrying um, to the degree that I was. And when that occurred, like there was such a change in the, like in me where I had this lightness of energy um, that was, that was incredible. And, you know, just this more joyful, joyful energy come in. And with that, I was kind of like, wow, okay. Like, you know, we don't have to spend like our lifetimes in therapy. It is actually possible to shift things so quickly if you allow it to. And, and that got me really excited because I was kind of like, wow, this is a way that people can shift out of trauma. Like they don't have to be the survivors of their trauma. They can actually like not be affected by it anymore and actually choose to live beyond it and not be kind of like, you know, victims for the rest of their life. And so that was very much kind of like where I was coming from um, with setting up my business originally. So I trained in the first three courses in Thailand and that was an incredibly beautiful experience where you know, like what theta healing is, is it's like this, it's this meditation process that allows people to basically change the belief systems and reprogram their subconscious by using the theta brainwave meditation um, and the energy of infinite intelligence all around us to bring in new information into our subconscious Um so that those old belief systems shift. So what tends to occur in a session is you'll have kind of like this digging process of the practitioner asking you questions because we have like all of these belief systems that are kind of entangled and connected to one another that doesn't make logical sense, okay? So you've kind of got to like ask the questions to follow the trail of beliefs till you get to like one that's kind of like, it's kind of like the root belief, right? And so when you get to that, you can kind of ask like, or, or, you know, work out like, what is, what, what is this here for? Like, why is this person believe this? Because all of the beliefs that we have, we have them for a reason. Our brain's actually trying to protect us. It's trying to learn something from these beliefs. And so when you ask the person or you ask the energy of infinite intelligence, like what, what is this person trying to learn from this belief? Like, why are they holding on to this? You can get all sorts of awarenesses and then you can ask the universe to actually bring in that information, show them how to be all of that without holding on to the belief. And it allows so much to shift. Um, and so those 10 days, like learning that modality, um, like it was, it was a beautiful time for me because it really assisted me to step into my psychic capacities because on the on those first three courses um it's not just learning how to actually do the digging and uh, that process of asking questions and you know using source energy to actually bring in the new new information but it's also accessing all sorts of different um planes of existence like different different um like you know learning to communicate with angels learning to communicate with your ancestors um just uh, so many different things that allowed me to really kind of step into a level of empowerment within myself that I hadn't had before. And so then I just wanted to kind of share that with the world. And so I set up my business. I moved to London because I'd, I'd got married the previous year um, and started to um, facilitate sessions. I did a lot of practice sessions with other practitioners Um, which was a huge gift. I was very obsessive with it. So I really wanted to kind of like learn how to do digging well, how to do that process of getting to that core belief and, and, and really being tapped into source energy and, and how like our subconscious minds kind of, or how like awareness really works is the less solid belief systems you have, the more you're tapped into that energy of like pure, pure, like, um, source energy or infinite intelligence. So you can get more kind of balanced answers from the universe if you don't hold like a lot of belief systems. So I was very obsessive with kind of like working through all of the material and learning all of the material and, and really learning the kind of common algorithms that people function from and, you know, learning how to resolve trauma for people and, and kind of like help them like 
get a sense of themselves beyond like the, the abusive experiences that they've had. So that was the first couple of years with, with, um, with my business. But in those years, I was also constantly doing more classes in theater healing to, to, um, widen my skills in it. So after the core classes, there's this intuitive anatomy class, which is like 15 days learning the different systems of the body and learning each day a, like a different system, tapping into it, psychically tuning in, and then learning what programs that particular system is carrying and then working on those programs to shift them so that people have more ease with their body. Um, that was such, that class was like amazing. Like it, it's amazing when you do that partially because you can get so much information about other people's bodies and your own body um, when you're willing to kind of tap into that brainwave and, and receive the information because every single particle of energy is willing to speak to you if you're willing to receive from it. Um, but also because it's 15 days, doing it consistently really taps you into your psychic ability. And so the first time I did that course, because I did that course a couple of times, um, you know, the test at the end of the class was to psychically scan your body and to tell the, the facilitator, like what, what you saw and she would be tapping in as well and kind of see whether it would align. And, and I can remember, like, I was like, you know, scanning my body and, and I got to, um, one of my ovaries and I was like, there's a cyst there. And she was like, oh, you see that too. And I was like, yeah. And so after class, like I went and had an ultrasound because I was like, oh my God, I like, what if I, what if that's real? Um, and it was, uh, it was just like one that like, you know, women can sometimes just get them as part of their cycle and then they just disappear. And so they were just like, it's okay. It's fine. Like there's nothing to worry about. It'll go. Um, but that was such a gift to me because it was like, wow, like I can really see inside my own body, like in this meditative, meditate, like meditative state. Um, and so it really gave me the validation of my psychic ability. The classes that I did after that were disease and disorder and world relations. Now those classes were about changing our genetics or the information that's encoded into our genes. We can carry so much like ancestral trauma. We can carry all sorts of prejudices, belief systems from our ancestors through our DNA. And those classes teach you how to basically work with the ancestors and work with the DNA to shift the programs in a similar way, like with the digging process, asking the person questions. Yet at the same time, you have all of these incredible visions because when you're in that state, you actually tap into all that information that's within your genes and, and that connects to you know, the other lifetimes and you start to like, if, if you're willing to receive the information, you start to see all that in your head. You start to like, in a sense, get to know your ancestors in a way, um, that, 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 you know, isn't maybe considered possible. Like most people wouldn't consider possible. Um, and so it brings in this real kind of like, um, understanding and awareness and it allows so much to shift. So, I did those I did those courses and and then kind of like you know and and was building 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 like the muscle the psychic ability the ability to dig um but I was also at that time having uh all sorts of health problems and I was struggling to know what um what was going on and I'd had like different tests and I couldn't get answers. And then I got to the place where I was kind of like given up, like on the medical system. And I was like, I'll just, I'll just ignore the problem. Um, because they thought that, you know, I'd had like a couple of doctors kind of like be like, mm, is this all in your head? Um, and I knew that it wasn't in my head, but I didn't know what was wrong. And so, um, I felt very invalidated and a little bit crazy and I can remember like the beautiful Anna Kitney, who um, is a theater healer and um, now a business coach in London, was conducting the intuitive anatomy class again. And so I decided to sign up for that. And throughout, they, we did this exercise of kind of like sitting in a row 
and we were doing like quick intuitive body scans. So we would take turns to scan into each other's bodies and then we'd go to the next person and the next person and the next person because doing it that way, it kind of like takes you out of where you're allowing your mind to get in the way of um, your awareness because awareness is fast, right? So you've got to just say what you get. Um, and it was an interesting experience because at that point in time, like I had been so heavy, so exhausted, so run down. I was having like chest pains. I was having all sorts of stuff going on with my guts, like just like so skin issues, like there was so much going on. And as we went through each person, they were all kind of saying the same thing to me. And it was along the lines of like, whoa, like you're, you're, your body's like just it's like it's just giving up like oh my god it's so heavy like and 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 it's kind of like you know you can like to a degree people can kind of ignore you know what's going on in their own bodies um or at least i can but when you know seven people in a row kind of say the same thing that is actually what's going on and you kind of know it but you've been trying to avoid it it's kind of like okay I need to listen to this. Um, and so I actually, that was kind of like the thing that made me go back to the doctor and with the change of energy and everything that we worked on in class, instead of them saying that I was crazy or, you know, having like mental, mental issues, they actually looked at, looked at, um, other possibilities. And then that's when I was diagnosed with celiac disease. And so, um, those classes like just you know were a massive gift to me and the modality was a massive gift to me and I was teaching it I was very psychic I was able to remote view um I was able to like just like do all sorts of things that I th think um you know most people like I was just very different, like because of the training that I had and because of the practice. And I talked about like on another um, vlog about like the slot machine thing and how there's this like, you know, this moment where you can kind of like be in this energy of control and then flow with the energy and that's what would happen. And, and then I'd win money. And I think that that was partially like I had those capacities because of this training of being the commander, because when you're a theta healer, the way in which you facilitate the healings for people is you are the commander force and the universe is doing the work for you, okay, when you're in that state. And so that was that was kind of kind of my world. Now then I discovered access and um my with theta healing you've got to recertify every five years. Um but I had babies and I had, and at that time you couldn't do it online. So it was kind of like, I had this conflict of like, oh my God, like, how am I going to get to, you know, Montana, um, to recertify, um, when I've got this little one and access, um, you know, was doing all their classes online and, and for other reasons, you know, there was this lightness with access as well. And it felt like the path I needed to go down. So I, I decided to not retrain as a theta healer and I you know went down the path of being an access certified facilitator instead now there was heaps of gifts in that journey as well but um it's 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 been a bumpy ride and it's been a bumpy ride coming out of that and really looking at where I was when I began and the relationship dynamics that were were at play and where that kind of matched the energy of um, the facilitators, their unconscious and what maybe they hadn't worked through. And um, yeah, I, I kind of, it's been this weird, weird journey of feeling like I've been in this this um, other land for for eight years or so. And then all of a sudden, I'm not in that and and then I'm circling back to um, reclaim something in me that that I gave up be because because um, partially because I couldn't get to the US to to retrain but also as I became more ingrained in access consciousness and more using those methods, 
I think I kind of gave up using different modalities. I gave up Reiki. I gave up teaching Reiki. I gave up um, being a practitioner of theta healing, which I could still do. Um, because I kind of like, I don't know whether it was that I misinterpreted things that they said, or, um, I was aware of the subconscious judgments that the founders had. And I went into the wrongness of kind of being able to, um, heal people that way. Like, you, and, and the wrongness of being the superior and the wrongness of being able to project things. It was kind of like everything was wrong. So I kind of like shut off from everything that I'd learned in order to try and fit this other modality um, that, yeah, resulted in, in, in me kind of being told to leave and cast out. Um, so now I'm back rediscovering the gift of theta healing um, and wanting to assist others to learn it if they want to. Um, but that is also what I, what I use to assist people to unravel the subconscious programs that they have that is limiting their life. Because effectively, like everything is possible for you if you allow it to be. But a lot of the times, the reason why people don't allow it to be is because they've got all of these subconscious programming, you know, that is stopping them from believing that it's possible, stopping them from believing that they deserve it, stopping them from believing that it's safe to have it. A lot of the time, like the course that I just did was very much about um, learning about the survival part of the brain and how we can do create all of these belief systems in order to try and maintain survival to keep ourselves safe. But in that, um, it might not be something that's actually keeping you safe. It might be something that's keeping you stuck. So, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting it's it's an interesting modality, and I just kind of wanted to share all of that with you um, because if you are looking for the, well, this is the other thing that I wanted to get across with this with everything that had occurred, like I can see like how dynamically I kind of aligned and got going um, with the founders of Accesses realities and in a sense gave up parts of me in that process of being a facilitator while at the same time also experiencing um you know magical occurrences and you know the the tools did contribute a lot to my life and I still do like have my bars run and do bars swaps I just don't do it professionally um but I can see and I don't know like whether it again like whether it was me tapping in energetically to their universes and kind of like with all my people pleaser programs at the time, because of, you know, the past experiences I've had in relationships kind of shut down parts of me in order to, in order to try and um, please them. Or if it was just my obsessive nature and kind of the need to get things right. But all of that kind of created this, this place where I think I did get a little brainwashed um, in in the modality and what can occur like something that I've looked at recently I've been looking at that and and how that can occur and I read this study like the other night of this thing online that was talking about mice and how um, they did this study where there's there's kind of like if there's you know two mice one's more dominant what they found is that um, the one that wasn't as dominant, its brain waves would start to um, sync with the dominant mouse, right? And I think in any kind of group thing, that can occur for us too. And so that's kind of like what I've been looking at with relation to the experience that I've had in the past and where and who I made dominant and um, then, you know, me kind of like tapping into those brain waves, and um, then kind of like being only what I was allowed to be based upon the subconscious programming of that particular person or those particular people. And so if you are somebody that has had a relationship 
that has where you weren't the dominant one. And I don't mean like when I talk about dominance, I don't mean that you have to have dominance over the other person. Dominance is really like the willingness to actually be the one that's choosing, being the one that's actually strong enough in their own energy to know who they are and not kind of like willing to give that up for anybody. So in effect, being willing to be in control of your own brain and be the one that actually um, chooses what frequency that's on as opposed to just receiving the brainwaves and, and allowing that to sync up to everybody else's. Um, if you've had relationships though where somebody else has been more dominant in that relationship, you might want to look, well, hang on, how much of what I've been experiencing in my, in my life has been like my choosing and how much is it me tapping into their brainwave frequency and then acting out the programs of what is going on for them unconsciously that they don't want to look at or what it is that they believe about women or what it is that they believe about men or what it is they believe about their mother or their father, you know, like, so, cause this is what can occur. It's kind of like, if you're tapping into that frequency, then you start to sink and then you start to become whatever it is that they've decided you are. But in that, that it's like, if you, how, how are you kind of like defined? So if you're a woman in their subconscious, what does that mean? If you are in a relationship with them, what does that mean based upon their data file of what relationship is? So this is kind of like what I've been exploring um, and looking at, you know, all the people in my life who I've made dominant and what's in their subconscious and what's me and, and what's me acting out their subconscious programming. The reason why I'm sharing all of this, and I hope I'm making sense, is that I think Medela, like Theta Healing for me, um, with... What, with looking at all of that and wanting to really be that that space of me again and knowing what is true for me and not aligning with other people's point of view and not making them greater, being willing to receive from everyone or everything and, you know, still learn from other teachers, but not, not, um, not kind of like becoming what I'm not in order to fit into their box of reality. Um, I'm aware that being like the, the importance of having command and choice over your own brainwave frequencies and theta healing is something that can assist you to have that um, because you're learning how to switch your brain into the theta brainwave, which allows you to be more connected to the universe. It allows you to develop that trust in yourself um, and the programming that you unravel um, allows you to kind of connect more and more and more to that. So if you are someone that has had a lot of relationships where you haven't been dominant, where you have been a people pleaser, where you are aware that you tend to act out everybody else's stuff, or you become someone in the relationship that isn't you, you might want to check out this modality. You might want to learn it, or you might just want to have some sessions um, and see what it is that is creating that and and you know that may be part of the journey to, to getting you back and and being able to choose for you so um i hope this contributes to you guys um if you have any questions about everything that i've said feel free to leave messages for me if there's something that you want me to talk more about feel free to leave messages for me um if you'd like a theta healing session or you have something that you want to work on or you, or you would like to just be more um, tapped into yourself, um, you can book sessions with me. I'll leave the link below this video for that. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope this video made sense, but if not, oh well. Um, thanks so much for listening, guys. I'm grateful. And until next time, have a great day.